Hey guys, you're back with Feynman Education and today we are going to cover a very very important topic in year one economics which is indirect taxes. So um, let's get started. For the definition of indirect tax, it is basically a tax on any expenditure. So indirect tax is a tax on expenditure. This is your formal definition. There can be two types of indirect taxes. So the two types are one is the ad valorem tax, which is your VAT, and one is specific indirect tax. So for these two types of indirect taxes, so ad valorem tax is basically a tax which changes according to the proportion of the value of the product which is being paid for so usually the tax charge increases in proportion to the value of the tax base so it is basically a percentage of tax so uh, in real life we see that oh vat is three percent vat is five percent so uh the most the easiest way to understand if it is an ad valorem tax or a specific tax is that VAT is always in percentages and it usually increases with the price of the product. Specific tax, on the other hand, is a lump sum tax. And specific tax does not really increase or decrease with the value of the product. It is just a unit tax. For example, uh, the specific tax can be uh, 5 dirhams per unit. So 5 dirhams per unit on probably, I don't know, a book. So if you buy one book, you pay 5 dirhams for the book if you pay two books you pay five plus five ten dirhams so it does not change it stays constant for each unit okay now um let's move on to um the diagrams for indirect taxes so as we said there are two types VAT and specific so there will be two types of diagrams for each of these um honestly both the diagrams say the same thing they're just drawn in a very slightly different way so the y-axis is my price and the x-axis is my quantity being bought or sold as usual so for ad valorem tax taxes always affect my supply side as we already know so an increase in tax will increase my cost of production and supply will in supply will decrease and vice versa if taxes are decreased supply will increase so my demand curve will always be unchanged taxes will not affect my demand curve so let's just draw our demand curve since these won't change now the supply curve so let's say this is s1 the initial supply curve um this is pe my equilibrium price and my existing equilibrium quantity all right and then for example taxes usually increase in a question they're gonna give you so I say the ad valorem tax increased from I don't know five percent to seven percent and for a specific tax I say the tax increased from five dirhams to seven dirhams now uh, the only difference is that for ad valorem tax the supply curve will make a pivotal shift and for a specific tax the supply curve will make a parallel shift why the same reason because for ad valorem tax the taxes increase with the price of the product right so as the price of the product keeps increasing along this line 
the um, value of the tax keeps on increasing and therefore this is a pivotal shift there is more distance over here than over here okay and for specific tax it is a parallel shift because it is a lump sum and it stays constant for each unit so therefore this distance will always remain constant so now um for both of the diagrams this is my new equilibrium so let's say this is p2 so you're done pretty much done with the diagrams now the other important thing to know is the incidence of tax so your incidence of tax is basically how much of your tax falls on the consumers and how much of the tax falls on the suppliers and your incidence of tax will usually depend on um, the elasticities of your supply and demand so if the demand is very price elastic consumers will pay a lower proportion of the tax and your, if your demand is very price inelastic then consumers will pay a higher proportion of the tax and vice versa so you already know that and um so for now let's talk about the incidence of tax over here so this is the new equilibrium in order to find out the incidence of tax the easy way i know a lot of you get confused i used to get confused so the easy way that i know is take the point in the new equilibrium and then go on to the old supply curve once you're there draw another line to the price axis make it p1 maybe do the same here the new equilibrium is this go on to the old supply curve you get a rectangle you have the price over here equilibrium price now you can see the rectangle is divided in two parts the upper part and the lower part in both the cases for indirect taxes the upper part is the incidence of tax on the consumers and the lower part is the incidence of tax on the producers same over here the upper part is the incidence of tax on consumers the lower part is the incidence of tax on producers to make it easier i'll just so this shaded area is for consumers same over here All right and the shaded area below is for producers Ooh, sorry it's a bit messy but i just want to make sure you understand so that is it the upper part is for consumers the lower part is for producers it's the exact opposite in terms of subsidies but we, i will go over it in another video so that is basically it whatever you need to know from um indirect taxes and um so now let's do our usual drill and go over a very simple 20 markers that you can encounter 20 markers from indirect taxes are very common so please please make sure that you know all of these and they don't the only thing they ever do in the 20 markers is that they ask you to evaluate the impact of an imposition or an increase in indirect tax on consumers and producers or you know the microeconomic impacts in general so all that you have to do is whatever i've just done so let's go over one of these and make sure you don't lose marks so a question can be like um a government introduced an indirect tax on mobile internet usage the aim was to increase tax revenue so when you Im impose indirect tax your tax revenue for the government also increases and um, in the diagram okay let's do this in this diagram both of these diagrams the tax revenue is the total area that is shaded over here i mean um, the red area and the green area in total in both the graphs are your tax revenue per unit if you multiply it by q2 both these sides those will be my tax total tax revenue so if we have to write it let's just write it down for you so my total tax revenue will be basically 
P2 minus P1, which is P2 minus P1 is my this rectangle area, which I just talked about, times Q2 in both the cases. Okay, this is also very important. All right, so let's move on to our question. So in order to increase the tax revenue, the government imposed um, an indirect tax. So um, the indirect tax in this case was 200, let's say $200. So tax was $200 per unit. And because of this, the internet, mobile internet usage decreased from 47.4% to 35 percent in the population so this is what happened and the question is evaluate the impact of the increase in indirect tax okay so 20 marks so um, let's start. Firstly, um, any 20 marker, we start with the definition. So our first point will be define indirect tax, which we just did above. I'm not going to write it down all over again. So it's a tax on expenditure. That's what you write. Now, um, the government imposed 200 dirhams per unit. So you can guess this is not an ad valorem tax. There is no percentage. So you directly go to specific tax. You know this is a specific tax. Two hundred dirhams, uh, uh, two hundred dollars is a lump sum amount. So you say it's a specific tax, and then you define specific tax. All right. These will get you two marks, and then you go on to your indicative content, which is apply and analysis. So what happens when there is a tax increase or a tax imposition? So um, you can draw the diagram. This is going to be the diagram. This is the exact same diagram that you're going to draw. So I'm not drawing it again, but this is the diagram for a specific tax. And you are going to say, draw the diagram because it's going to get you extra marks. And then under this, you are going to say that the supply curve shifts inwards to S2. Um, be careful, it's not a pivotal shift, it's just a normal parallel shift. What happens? Um, cost of production, COP, increases to firms. And therefore, supply curve shifts inwards, they supply less, quantity falls, quantity supplied falls. And then what happens? Quantity consumed also falls. As you can see over here, there is a movement along the demand curve upwards. So quantity demanded falls, movement upwards. Okay, since quantity demanded falls, you now do some application of the um, small extract that they gave to you. Quantity demanded falls, how? We know the evidence over here. So, consumption fell from 47.4% to 35%. You did the application, you get your marks. And then prices increase, right? Prices increase. And when prices increase, consumer surplus falls. You say that, you get your marks, right? Consumer surplus falls. Producer surplus also falls because prices increased and quantity supplied decreased. So, if 
producer surplus falls, lower profits, right? Pretty easy points, it's really just basic demand supply stuff. And then you talk about the incidence of tax, yeah? So you're just going to say on consumers and producers, the incidence of tax on consumers is the upper part, the incidence of tax on, the con on producers is the lower part. You basically talk about the areas, okay? Now, it was done to increase tax revenue. So you say this tax revenue can be used by the government to, you know, do societal good. Okay, they can make the, I don't know, build roads and railways, infrastructure, and they will cause external benefits. Okay, so this is what you can do and all of these these are a lot of points. They will get you your 12 marks All right, and then comes our evaluation Which is eight marks per evaluations what we can say is that it, there might be a measurement problem we don't know the we, we might not know the right level of tax to impose we don't know which one is high or which one is low so that is a problem tax and subsidy evaluations are literally almost the same you just have to remember these points it's a measurement problem We don't know if 200 dirhams is too much we don't know how much is too much or how much is too less it the effect impact depends on the magnitude this is the most famous evaluation so impact whatever impact these everything we just stated it depends on the magnitude of the tax if 200 is too much magnitude will be higher if 200 is too less for the population magnitude will be lower and then we can say that if 200 is not a significant tax for the people in this country, then impact will be lower. Right. Another very um, famous is the time lag. So there is a time lag between the imposition of tax and the um, effects to come into place and it will take time. And then the last evaluation point is that um, there might be black market, right? So I'm giving a lot of evaluations. You just have to write three or four. Black market might you know start because if people can't buy the mobile data legally they might find a way to buy it illegally and then the entire argument of increasing the tax falls so that is what you can do and these will get you eight marks and that's basically it it's pretty easy and if you know the evaluation points are literally always the same these points are all I mean, if you increase tax, all of these are going to happen no matter what. So just try to remember the diagrams and that's all basically. And it's going to be easy to navigate. Well, thank you for watching and we'll see you next time.